good evening students the other day we discussed about the viruses there you can find no cell wall no protoplasm you can find only a nucleic acid with the protein core is the most primitive then next developed and the smallest living organism that is bacteria this bacteria means little rod in a greek language they are the most simple and minute living organisms very simple nature having a prokaryotic nucleus and uh, no mitochondria no endoplasmic reticulum no golgi bodies so it is most primitive living organism ethelberg 1829 coined the term bacterium and he named the bacterium the little rod as bacterium the study of bacteria is known as bacteriology bacteriology means the study of bacteria next let us see the discovery how different types of bacteria or different uh, genera of bacteria are developed uh, from time to time in 1675 anton von leeuwenhoek discovered bacteria and called them animal cules out that that much research is being done on bacteria in 1829 ekrenberg find the word bacterium in 1876 louis pasteur demonstrated the role of bacteria in fermentation and uh, decay and how these living things decay by the effect of these bacteria in 1876 robert koch or koch provided that uh, proved that the bacteria can cause disease of uh, anthrax tb and cholera so for up to 1876 their function or their effect on the diseases is not known and robert koch the first to prove the bacteria can cause the diseases of anthrax tb and cholera <clears throat> next in 1879 nesser discovered gonococcus bacteria so previously they are called uh, as bacillus any bacteria called bacillus or coccus like that only later the names are changed and then nesser discovered gonococcus bacteria 1881 austen discovered staphylococcus bacteria in 1882 robert koch discovered bacillus of tb so they called he called it as bacillus of tb later the name is changed as micrococcus or myco and then 1882 83 robert koch again he discovered uh, cholera vibrio it causes cholera disease in 1884 lofler discovered diphtheria bacillus that is a diphtheria disease causing bacteria and in 1884 nikolai discovered tetanus bacillus tetanus causing bacteria in 1886 frankel discover pneumococcus bacteria it causes uh, pneumonia disease later it is changed to diplococcus pneumoniae now let us see the occurrence of this is uh, the important uh, <coughs> discovery and then the occurrence how you can find this bacteria bacteria is everywhere that's why you can call it as uh, omnipresent everywhere so now let us see the uh, important bacteria which are found at different habitats in soil nitrosomonas bacteria nitrobacter agetobacter rhizobium these are found in soil the soil they also increase the soil fertility in water salmonella typhi nostridium titani vibrio cholerae pegella dysentery <coughs> these are all bacteria which are found in water so that the water contamination leads to the presence of these bacteria in air bacillus subtilis and clostridium bacteria are there 
is clostridium fixed atmospheric nitrogen and in milk bacillus lactobacillus streptococcus lassis escherichia coli aerobacter aerogens they are found in milk and uh, on meat and eggs proteus pseudomonas and e coli are found on meat and eggs and most of the food poisoning that is when a food material is infected with this following bacteria it causes severe diseases and causes a uh, botulism highly poisonous streptococcus aureus clostridium botulinum salmonella typhimurium these are the food poisoning causing bacteria regarding the size since they are very small they are uh, ranges from 0.5 to 1 micron diameter and about uh, 3 to 5 microns in length so the other day i told you what is a micron it is 1 by 1000 mm regarding the shape fj con 1872 recognized four types based on this uh, shape the spherical bacteria that is a rounded circular exam that is also called the caucus type of bacteria and the rod shaped bacteria are called the bacillus types and the spiral shaped bacteria are spirillum and comma shaped vibrio so the spherical now let us see one by one the spherical or the rounded bacteria called the caucus type the plural cocci based on the number on the arrangement of the cells there is they are simple if you happen to see in a microscope they are not sometimes are single and sometimes two cells may be joined together sometimes a chain of bacteria and sometimes a cluster of bacteria based on that they are given different names as follows the monococcus is single caucus bacterium that is found in somewhere that is called uh, the monococcus and uh, two caucus bacteria unite together they join together and move that is called a diplococcus bacteria or diplococci and uh, a chain of many caucus bacteria that is called a streptococcus a chain and uh, uh, sarsinia is that's you know is a, a cubical arrangement of eight caucus bacteria arranged on just like a cube and then staphylococcus a group of caucus type of bacteria arranged as a bunch of grapes that is called a staphylococcus bacteria <laughs> regarding the rod shaped bacterium the bacillus bacteria are divided into three types similar just like that monobacillus a single rod shaped bacterium diplobacillus a pair of rod shaped bacteria and strepto a chain of rod shaped bacteria so streptococcus there is monobacillus diplobacillus and streptobacillus regarding the spiral shaped bacteria they are just like a spiral way is a long and spirally coiled bacterium spirally coiled bacterium a comma means just like a comma it is a bacterium with a slight bent cell and appears like a comma those are called comma shape that is called the vibrio name name is given as vibrio bacteria <laughs> regarding the flagellum flagella is a long uh, cylindrical bodies help in locomotion or moving from one place to another place regarding this depend upon the bacteria this uh, flagellum and the direction they are given different names number 1 monotrichus the trichus these are the trichome is also called the hair hair is also called trichome and uh, trichology also there monotrichus having one flagellum at one end in the first diagram you can see one flagellum at one end that is called monotrichus uh, example vibrio cholerae the second one leptotrichus 
Leptotrichus means a bunch of flagella at one end. That is called uh, Leptotrichus. Example, Pseudomonas fluorescens. And the third one, Amphitrichus. The flagella, single flagella at both ends. That is called uh, Amphitrichus. That is called Aquaspirillum serpents. Example is Aquaspirillum serpents. And the next, when the flagella are found all over the body, throughout the body, that is called a peritrichus type. Example, Salmonella typhimurium. The last one that is called atrichus. Atrichus means no trichus. No trichus means no flagella. Example, Cornea bacterium diphtheriae. In Cornea bacterium diphtheriae, you don't find any trichomes or uh, flagella. And what is the function of the flagella? So, flagella shows a chemotactic movement. Shows chemotactic movement. That is, movement towards a chemical substance. If a particular chemical substance or a food material that is there, it shows a positive chemotactic movement. And uh, if any material that is not good one or a harmful material, and where there it goes away from the material that is called uh, the negative chemotactic moment. Generally, the main function of this flagella is locomotion, locomotion and uh, movement. It's all same, both are same. Next. Now let us see the ultra structure of a bacterial cell. So here you can find the ultra structure of a bacterial cell. So in this, the outer you have a slime layer, capsid is there in some bacteria, capsid, and in some bacteria you have directly the cell wall you can find here. Below the cell wall we have the plasma membrane, and then inside you have this cytoplasm, at the center you have the DNA that is called nucleoid because yeah, it is not having nuclear membrane, so it is called a nucleoid. Oid means like nucleus, like nucleoid. And then you can find the ribosomes are present inside, and also a number of ribosomes joined together to form a polyribosome. And uh, uh, this is very important thing: the mesosome. These are the infoldings of the plasma membrane. Those are called the mesosomes. And they have the respiratory respiratory enzymes are there inside the mesosome. Now let us see in detail the each and every part of this bacterial cell. So the first I told you already the slime layer, it is made up of polysaccharides and amino acids and help for attachment purpose to a substratum. Then cell wall is very important because of the cell wall only we kept this bacteria in plants. Made up of polysaccharides, proteins and lipids and uh, the unique compound that you can find only in bacteria is the peptidoglycan or mucopeptides or urine. This is very important. This you can find only in bacteria. You never find these things in other plant cells. Next, <clears throat> the plasma membrane. This is also called the cell membrane and selectively permeable membrane as you can find in plasma membrane of uh, other plants. The mesosomes as I told you already, infoldings of the plasma membrane because there is no mitochondria to carry the respiratory function in bacteria, the mesosomes carry those function. Uh, they contain the respiratory enzymes, hydrogenases and oxidases etc. and help. Another very important thing is during the cell division, generally these mesosomes are found at the center. These mesosomes are found in the center. So it is supposed that during the binary fission, after the separation of that uh, DNA, at the center you can find septa will form at the place of mesosome. So mesosomes help uh, in the formation of septa in between the two cells of bacteria. So, regarding this mesosomes, the one thing 
they carry the respiratory function and another thing is the formation of cell wall after binary fission. The next flagella, you know already, it is of 4 to 5 microns in length, depend upon the bacterium. It is made up of a protein, a special type of protein that is called flagellin and function is locomotion in function. Regarding the pili or fimbriae, these are the smaller in size. The pili are smaller in size. The single singular number is uh, pileus, plural pili. The pili they are shorter and rod-like and uh, found uh, around this bacterial cell. So the pili is also known as the fimbriae. These are small, hair-like outgrowths made up of protein, a special type of protein that is called pilin and formation of O. This is what are the functions of this pilin. The one is during the conjugation, two bacteria come together. The donor bacteria is having pili. So with the help of this pili, it is attached with the, the recipient bacteria and form a conjugation canal. That is the function of this pili. Form a conjugation canal and also it helps the cell to adhere attached to the substratum that is another function of the pili. So, pili is having two functions. One, one function is they help in the formation of a conjugation tube or conjugation canal during conjugation and the second one is adhering to a substratum. Next cytoplasm, the main thing that you can find it is granular and viscous. It is viscous, not viscous, sorry. This is viscous uh, with uh, water, carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, inorganic ions, vitamins, coenzymes, liposomes, dissolved food, and a large amount of RNA. They are all present in the cytoplasm. Another very important thing that is uh, chromatophores. Chromatophores. Chromos means color, color means that is uh, having these photosynthetic pigments. And just like the mesosomes, because there is no mitochondria, the chromatophores, just like the chloroplast, because there is no chloroplast inside, is the same that in foldings of this plasma membrane, the single membrane, the vesicular structure of cytoplasmic membrane contain the photosynthetic pigment. The photosynthetic chlorobium chlorophyll or bacterial chlorophyll, etc., are found in this chromatophore. Next. And another thing, uh, very important one is uh, the nucleoid. As I told you already, a nucleus means a perfect nucleus having a nuclear membrane and chromatin reticulum and also having nucleoli. Here, you don't find any membrane. The nuclear membrane just floating in the cytoplasm. It is a double membrane DNA, very important, and not having nuclear membrane. So, it is nucleoid, nucleus like nucleoid, double standard DNA, proteins. Main important thing is no histogen proteins, histone proteins, histone brown, no histone proteins are there. That is uh, the important character found in the center, no surrounding membrane. They told you. So, it is nucleoid, nucleus like structure, not nucleus. So, it is nucleoid. Uh, and another very, very, very important the plasmid. See, the plasmids. These are the extra chromosomal DNA found in the bacterial cell. There already chromosomal DNA is there. I told you already it is found in the center. In addition, some extra chromosomal DNA also found in the bacteria. It is also having a double membrane or double stranded structure. Extra chromosomal DNA found in the bacterial cell that is uh, discovered by Lederberg. 1952. It is double stranded DNA and it can replicate independently and carry the characters from one generation to another generation.
Uh, this is because of this replication only the biotechnology came. If there is no plasmid, no biotechnology. Because the transgenic characters are exploiting the genes and getting the characters from one person to one another person through the gene transfer that is possible only through the plasmids only. Without plasmid, no biotechnology. So, here you can find there are two types of uh, plasmids. One is fertility factor or uh, the sex factor plasmid. This plasmid is having this factor. It is responsible for the transfer of genetic material from one strain to another strain. So, during conjugation, the transfer of genetic material from one cell to another cell take place through this F factor or sex factor only. The next thing is R factor or resistant factor. So, if any disease is there, just we are used to take a medicine, that medicine never functions. Because of this factor only, it provides a resistance signal to the drug. It gives resistance to the plant or this bacteria towards the feces. It provides resistance against the drugs. So, the plasmid, as I told you already, very important in biotechnology and it can replicate because of this character only, replicate independently character only, we are exploiting the genes and carry transfer from one organism to another organism through the plasmid. Next, it is of two types the fertility factor and resistance factor. The next very interesting thing, uh, Christian Graham, 1884, tried to classify the bacteria depend upon the cell wall composition. Cell wall composition. Mm -hmm. That is, some bacteria having more peptidoglycans in the cell wall and some have only little, little peptidoglycan in the cell wall. So, based on this, he started a staining technique. This is called a differential staining technique. Differential staining technique that is a staining with a one or more than one chemicals. So, first he collected a culture of bacteria, keep on a swipe, and add a crystal violet solution. When you add a crystal violet solution, the culture, the bacteria becomes bluish purple color and then slowly wash without washing the material blow the wash and add a potassium iodide. And add the potassium iodide, the previous stain will retain. And then what happens? Well, all are same color, same color you have. And then wash slowly and then de-stain with acetone or ethyl alcohol. This is a de-staining material, so you can remove the things. If you can remove, ink remove, that is acetone only. The paper, you have to write the in uh, line. If you want to remove the line, you can add a stone, the line will be removed. So, this time with acetone or ethyl alcohol, even after destaining, the bacteria which retain the stain, retain the stain, that is, here you can have a bluish purple, and then this stain, potassium iodide, here you can find a red color. If the material or the bacteria retain the stain, those are called gram positive bacteria. After destaining, they lose the color, those are called the gram negative bacteria. So, this is a, a wonderful technique to separate the bacteria into two groups. So, retain stain, as I told you already, gram positive bacteria, the cell walls containing tychoic acid and tychromic acid. And uh, as I told you, Dense peptide linkages of polysaccharides, polypeptides, or peptidoglycans. Peptide means protein, glycan means carbohydrates. So, more dense peptide linkages of polysaccharide molecules are found in the gram positive bacteria. Whereas in gram negative bacteria, the cell wall containing two components that uh, lie outside the Peptidoglycan here, we see it is not on. This is P, peptidoglycan layer. Those are lip, lipoproteins, outer membrane, lipopolysaccharides, 
and loosely arranged peptide linkages that is glycopeptides are very simple, just very little only 10 percent and having a loosely linked the gram negative bacteria and now let us see uh, examples i think you might understand the difference between the gram positive gram positive and gram negative these cells very important contain tycoic acid and tychronic acid and a dense peptide linkage of polysaccharides that is uh, nearly some 70 percent of peptidoglycans are found in the cell wall whereas in the gram negative you have only little amount of peptidoglycans are there here the peptidoglycans are very less and uh, now let us see some examples because you can find a number of uh, gram positive and gram negative bacteria are there of which you do very little uh, account of uh, examples are given gram positive streptococcus staphylococcus clostridium clostridium clo clostridium lactobacillus micrococcus etc regarding the gram negative rhizobium agetobacter salmonella tigella pseudomonas you can have make a note of these things out of interest you can note down the bacteria and their characteristics the gram positive and gram negative bacteria next respiration bacterial respiration bacterial respiration uh, respiration is of two types one is aerobic another is anaerobic generally are all uh, the aerobic respiration we need oxygen for our respiration that is bacillus subtilis etc the anaerobic that is called a fermentation that oxygen is not necessary they take a fermentation example clostridium anaerobic bacteria no aerobic anaerobic clostridium etc and then now let us see the nutrition of bacteria this is a very interesting one that you can find some bacteria having chloroplast chlorophyll so that they can prepare their food materials and some bacteria some bacteria so there you can find nutrition. So, we have nutrition and some bacteria, a bacterial nutrition. So, this one, this is depend upon whether they can prepare their own food material or depend upon other organisms. The bacterial nutrition is divided into autotrophic bacteria and heterotrophic bacteria. The bacteria are classified into two types autotrophic bacteria these bacteria can prepare their food materials on food material whereas this heterotrophic actually trophy means food levels trophy means food autotrophy means they can prepare their own food whereas hetero when they cannot prepare they can depend upon different organisms for getting food materials and the next classification it is divided into autotrophic bacteria are divided into Photo autotrophic bacteria and chemo autotrophic bacteria. So, thing is here, uh, next we will learn autotrophic bacteria, the photo autotrophic and chemo autotrophic. This photo autotrophic bacteria having chlorophyll and then utilize sunlight as a source of energy. Generally, general photosynthesis is to make use of the sunlight with the help of chloroplast they will prepare the energy generally the energy in uh, in the form of atp and nadph2 atp adenosine triphosphate nadph2 nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate reduced so these two things are used to 
reduce carbon dioxide into food materials. So, here also they utilize sunlight as a source of energy. And in higher plants, what happens? The splitting of water molecules takes place. That is, water is split to water split to this what is called oxygen and uh, in, uh, that uh, donor H2 donors. But here what happens? No splitting takes place and uh, no oxygen is released. That is an important thing between a bacterial photosynthesis and higher plant photosynthesis is having chlorophyll, utilize sunrise, that is common. But this point differs. No splitting of water and release of oxygen. Whereas in higher plants, water is splitted and oxygen is released during the light reaction. And the next one, the chemo autotrophic chemo means a chemicals with the help of a chemical substance. With the help of a chemical substance, autotroph, they can prepare their own food material. So in this, photosynthetic pigments are absent. No chloroplast. Get energy by oxidizing inorganic or organic compounds. Because energy is necessary in those two things. With the energy only, they break the carbon dioxide or just reduce carbon dioxide into carbohydrate for which energy is necessary. In this, energy comes from the sunlight. sunlight. Here, by oxidizing a inorganic or organic compounds. Next, we will see the next slide. The autotrophic bacteria, I told you already. So, here also the hydrogen donor is very, very important. For higher plants, hydrogen donor, you can have water. But here, different things. So, based on this, based on the hydrogen donor, based on the hydrogen donor, these are classified into photolithotrophs and photoorganotrophs. So, here you can find lithos means inorganic substances. Organs means organic substances. Organo means organic substances. So now, here the hydrogen donor, inorganic substance. So the inorganic substance may be hydrogen or it may be another chemical substance that I will tell you. In this litho photo lithotrophs, an example of a green sulfur bacteria, hydrogen donor is H2S. So remember, in this uh, hydrogen donor in an organic substance, if it is hydrogen, you can find in a green sulfur bacteria. Example, chlorobium bacteria. Green sulfur bacteria, example, chlorobium bacteria. In this bacterium, the chlorophyll is bacteriovirudin. Bacteriovirudin is the chloroplast in chlorobium bacteria. In this, the hydrogen donor is H2S. The next one, in purple sulfur bacteria, for example, promacium, in this, the hydrogen donor is this thiosulfate, THIO, thiosulfate, thiosulfate, example, promacium, in this, chloroplast is bacteriochlorophyll. Bacterial chlorophyll is the chlorophyll that you can find in purple sulfur bacteria, example, promacium. Regarding the photoorganotrophs, there you can find the hydrogen donor is organic acid or alcohol. For example, purple non sulfur bacteria, hydrogen donor is isopropanol. Isopropanol is the hydrogen donor. Example, rhodospirillum. So, remember again, regarding the phototrophic bacteria, they can use the sunlight and chemoautotrophs, they use the chemical substances or oxidized. So, in this photoautotrophic bacteria, when the hydrogen donor is an inorganic substance that is photolithotrophs, hydrogen donor is organic acid or alcohol, those are called photoorganotrophs. Photoorganotrophs. And now, 
Next, we have the hemoautotrophic bacteria. Hemoautotrophic bacteria based on the substrate oxidized hemolithotroph, hemoorganotroph. Again, lithotroph, inorganic substance, organotroph, organic compounds. Organic compounds. So, in chemolithotrophs, they oxidize inorganic compounds to get energy. Example, sulfur bacteria oxidizing H2S. Example, thiobacillus, thiobacillus bacteria. And iron bacteria oxidizing iron, ferrobacillus bacteria. Hydrogen bacteria oxidizing hydrogen, hydrogenomonas. The name of the bacteria, hydrogenomonas. Nitrifying bacteria oxidizing nitrogen. They are nitrosomonas, somonas, S O M E N E S, and nitrobacter, nitrobacter bacteria. So, this nitrosomonas converts the ammonia into nitrite. Nitrobacter nitrite to nitrates. Nitrates you can find. So then you can find this hemolithotrophic bacteria, hemolithotrophic bacteria, hemolithotrophic bacteria. You can find sulfur bacteria, iron bacteria, hydrogen bacteria, and a nitrifying bacteria. Whereas chemo organotrophs, organotrophs, chemo organotrophs, oxidizing inorganic compounds to get energy. To get energy. Example, methonic bacteria, not C, it is a T, M E T H O N I C, M E T H O N I C, methonic bacteria, acetone bacteria, and lactobacillus, lactobacillus bacteria. Okay. Heterotropic nutrition, I told you already, since they cannot get the food material. They cannot prepare the food material. They depend upon other organisms. They depend upon other organisms. And now, since they do not have any chlorophyll, depend upon other organisms for nutrition, they may be saprophytes. Saprophyte means, saprophyte means, that is, dead, dead, dead decay. They used to Decay the materials and get the material, they get the food material. Example, Bacillus subtilis. Heterotrophic nutrition. And uh, I told you already, the uh, heterotrophy, trophy means food levels, hetero means different. Since they do not have chloroplast and uh, they cannot prepare food material, so they depend upon other organisms for nutrition purpose. The first one is saprophytes. Saprophyte in nutrition is a nutrition where it decay the organic materials and get the food material. So the saprophytes include the Bacillus subtilis, one of the uh, saprophytic bacteria. And second one is the parasite. The parasitic nutrition that is it lives in or on other organisms for getting food material. So the examples here, Paxinia graminis, it is a parasite, sorry, uh, they depend upon other organisms. This uh, Paxinia graminis is wrong, don't note this one, the Paxinia graminis and uh, these two, don't note. The parasitic bacteria the parasitic bacteria, uh, the Bacillus anthracis, Bacillus anthracis bacteria that is found uh, on animals, and uh, Vibrio cholerae, 
the cholera causing bacteria that you can find in uh, human beings. And regarding the parasites in plants, Xanthomonas citri you have. Xanthomonas citri disease is causing in plant. And bacillus, anthracis on animals. Vibrio cholerae on human beings. And uh, the symbiotic bacteria is very interesting where these two partners, the symbionts, and uh, they live together and lead the life without uh, giving any harm to the other partner. So, for this, some examples like uh, the rhizobium bacteria. This rhizobium bacteria is found uh, in the roots of legume plants. The bacteria gets food materials from their cortex and uh, they supply and fix uh, nitrogenous materials to the host plant, nitrogen materials to the host plant. So, this way the bacteria shows a variety of nutrition in uh, autotrophs and uh, heterotrophic nutrition. Okay. So, next we will see reproduction. Reproduction is very, very important. That is to increase his cells, increase his generation. The reproduction is very, very essential. In this, uh, it is of uh, three types uh, vegetative reproduction, asexual reproduction, and uh, sexual reproduction. Regarding this vegetative reproduction, uh, it takes place. A process is known as the binary fission or fission, binary fission or fission or uh, a mitosis. Uh, of course, a mitosis is not clear yet. Uh, fission or binary fission. So, before that, what happened? One bacterial cell having a constriction at the center where you can find the mesosomes. So I told you already. The mesosomes are found in the center of the bacterial cell. At mesosomes, there is a constriction occurs side by side to the mesosome. And then the nuclear material becomes half. No replication actually, the chromosome material itself becomes half. And then the constriction proceeds. So the mesosomes, which are helpful for the formation of a two daughter, formation of a cell plate, the mesosomes help. To give a cell plate between the two cells, a cell plate and then two cells are separated. It's a very simple fission. Though it is a simple, it takes only 20 minutes. So you can expect a bacteria divides how many times, how much time, number of bacteria will get within 20 minutes. One bacteria becomes two bacteria within one hour. Within one day, within one month, one year, you can expect that the bacterial number is increasing by simply by this binary fission. The second one we have the asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction, so every living organism wants to live more years. That is the general tendency of the people. In the same way, the bacteria also, what happens when the conditions are not favorable, the cell secretes a very thick wall around it, very thick wall, more than three layers it have secreted and the nuclear material, not like this actually, the nuclear material, just a, a plasmalized cell, the nuclear material goes to one side and around it, it secretes a wall and whenever the conditions are favorable, it break down and give a bacterial cell. Is it a reproduction? What is meant by reproduction? In a reproduction, as you have seen in the binary fission, one bacteria becomes two cells and sometimes the other organisms like algae and fungi, during asexual reproduction, they give many individuals, many cells. Here, not this is the case. Here, one bacterium gives one bacterium only. So, it is not a type of reproduction and sometimes called, it is a type of reproduction without multiplication, without multiplication. It is a type of uh, an adaptation for unfavorable conditions. When conditions are not favorable, it secretes a wall. Whenever the conditions are favorable, it gives a new cell. It is what is called a, a, an adaptation or escaping the unfavorable conditions. So, this way you can get this uh, endospores 
endospore actually it is called a cell inside another cell or a spore inside another cell bacterial cell this is called endospore so endospore formation is quite common to tide over unfavorable condition so tomorrow we will discuss the sexual reproduction and the types etc thank you